what is going on YouTube? I am Lamont at large today. I am in Huntington, West Virginia, and I'm here to talk about the unsolved Huntington prom night murders. Huntington, West Virginia, population 50,000, a moderate sized town to say the least. And unfortunately, this town is no stranger to tragedy. Of course, this is a college town and this is where Marshall University is located. And of course, on November 14th, 1970, the entire Marshall football team, along with the coaching staff, were all killed in an airplane crash uh, not very far uh, from this area. And just like similar towns with similar sized population, it is no stranger to the opioid epidemic. Uh, Huntington has been hit hard with a drug problem similarly to other sized towns in this region of the country. Uh, you have Detroit, which is about a five and a half hour drive from here up to 75, where you have drug dealers coming from Detroit and they come down to West Virginia particularly Huntington and Charleston. You know, at the end of the day, it's simple mathematics. You buy a pill for $20 in Detroit and you come down here and you sell it for 40, you just doubled your money. And that is what is taking place right now. So let's talk about this quadruple unsolved murder. So you have prom night, May 22nd, 2005. You have Michael Dillon, 17 years old. He is a student at the Huntington High School here. And he's accompanied by his date, his girlfriend, Megan Poston, 16 years of age. She doesn't go to that high school. She goes to a high school in Barbersville, which is about 15 minutes away. So they go to the prom. I'm assuming they have a good time. And after that, they were supposed to go to a lockout. However, looking on the registry, uh, their names were not printed on it. So going to that early morning hours of May 22nd, 2005, you had Michael Dillon, 17, Megan Poston, 16. They had went to the apartment of a friend of theirs, Dante Ward, 19, and he was with his friend, Edric Clark, 18. 4.30 a.m., everything is very very quiet all of a sudden you hear pop 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 and then the screeching of car tires now even though it was 4 30 a.m or so there is still people awake and there are people sleeping but were awoken by those uh loud gunshots so immediately several people in the area start flooding 911 with calls I heard gunshots, I hear gunshots, I heard somebody screaming. Police are rolled out along with the fire department and the paramedics and they come to the scene and they see four bodies lying in front of a house on the 1400 block of Charleston Avenue, which is what I'm approaching on right now. By the time the paramedics arrived and were able to render aid three of the four kids were already dead. The fourth was taken to a hospital where they succumbed to their injuries, I believe about an hour or so later. Okay, so now you have a quadruple murder. Now this town averages about six murders a year. However, a quadruple murder, of course, doesn't happen very often. So now the detectives of the Huntington Police Department have a lot of work to do. They gotta figure out who committed this crime. So immediately they start interviewing all of the neighbors in the area, all of the neighbors. And a 12 year old girl they had spoken to said that she was, she was already up watching TV and she heard a girl scream, please don't shoot me, please don't shoot me. And then heard the gunshots. And then you had another neighbor who said that he heard somebody scream, please, I'm sorry. And then the gunshots. 
So police are looking around, time is flying. They don't have any suspects, but ah, ah, ah. However, the streets always talk. There's always somebody talking. So a confidential informant uh, contacted the detectives of the Huntington Police Department. And they said, hey, word on the street is a man by the name of Shannon Dennis is bragging about the murder. He's bragging that he was the getaway driver and that his homeboy T is the one that pulled the trigger and killed those four individuals. Okay, all right, cool. So they look up T, real name, Jamal Larone Ray, also goes by the alias Jamal Douglas. T stands for trouble. And looking at this guy's rap sheet, he brings a lot of that wherever he goes. So they talk to Shannon and they ask him, okay, somebody says that you were here on the night or the early morning hours of May 22nd, what's going on? And he immediately starts talking. And finally, after interrogation and, and all of this and that, supposedly, according to federal court documents, he admits that he was the getaway driver driving a 1987 Chevy white Monte Carlo with gray interior. He said that he drove Jamal to this scene and Jamal shot and killed all four of them. Okay. So they're asking him, well, why did he shoot these people? He said, well, the intended target was Dante. Okay, well, why did he want to kill Dante? Well, supposedly Dante Ward had broken into somebody's home on this very street in one of these houses where they lived and stole a large amount of marijuana. And either a hit was put out on him or that marijuana belonged to Jamal. Whatever the case might be, uh, he was wanted dead. The only reason why the other three were killed was because unfortunately, and I often don't like using this term, but wrong place, wrong time. They were uh, innocent victims in all of this. So they get all their stuff together and they go to Jamal's residence to conduct their search warrant. Now this house right here, this is where the murder occurred. This is where four kids tragically lost their lives. So as they're continuing their investigation, speaking with Shannon about the supposed involvement of him and Jamal in the murders, they're asking him about the supposed marijuana theft. Well, who was the person, who's marijuana, what happened, so forth and so on. And he says that there's a girl by the name of Bunny, her old name is Sherilita. So Sherilithia is a drug seller. She sells marijuana, she sells opioids, basically one of those persons that uh, whatever you need, uh, she's got your, your fix, so to speak. So they go to Sherilithia's house and they said, hey, uh, we have reason to believe that a uh you know you're we, we look and listen we both know you're a drug dealer <laughs> we we both know you're a drug pusher uh word on the street is uh, you had a large amount of marijuana stolen from you and she says yeah she says yeah she admits it she goes into further detail about other stuff but denies any involvement into the quadruple murder. So you have a man who is admitting to being an accomplice in this murder. So this almost seems like an open and shut case. They got him, they got the name of the supposed trigger man. Now they need the weapon. 
unfortunately, Shannon had told them that after the murder, that he threw the gun into the Ohio River. Okay, so it's going to be very difficult to go to the river and, and find that gun. It's practically going to be impossible. However, at least they got this guy basically admitting to be involved in the, the quadruple murder. You also got a woman by the name of Sherylithia who has a reason to want Dante dead. And unfortunately, the kids were collateral damage, I guess, in the minds of these sick, deranged people. However, the problem with his testimony is that Shannon Dennis is a drug addicted liar. The police even talked to his girlfriend and she said he wasn't even there. He was with me that night. He was sleeping in bed. But then she went on ahead later and, uh, and went back on what she said. This guy is just a hopeless drug addict. And then in other interviews, he's kind of going back on what he said. He's saying this, he's saying that. His, sto his story is starting to change. And now the police, they're probably thinking, okay, this is going to be quite difficult. Uh, this guy's not, uh, he's not uh, cooperating with us anymore. He's a known liar. If you ask any of his friends, nobody trusts him. I mean, this is a type of guy you wouldn't even lend him a stick of gum. However, they have enough evidence to get a judge to sign a search warrant to go to the house of Jamal Larone Ray. So they conduct a search warrant nice and early. That's the time that you want to catch uh, drug dealing scumbags. And even though supposedly Shannon Dennis said that the gun was thrown into the Ohio River, that they feel that maybe he's lying, maybe the murder weapon is at this house. So they go to the house, they drag everybody out, everybody gets to wear a pair of shiny new bracelets, the kind you wear behind your back, and they recover two firearms from the house. Okay, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe this is it. Maybe we got the murder weapon. Uh, however, uh, they did a ballistic test on the weapons, and unfortunately uh, they were not the weapons used to commit the murders this is the neighborhood where jamal used to live where the search warrant took place at now even though they didn't find the murder weapon they weren't able to arrest him for being a felon in possession of handguns because the two guns that they seized, well, you know, legally you're not supposed to be owning a firearm when you're a convicted felon. And so the article said online that he either lived at 1897 Marshall or 1891. So it would have either have been this corner home right here it could have been that house or it could have been this house where this gentleman is smoking a cigarette. So no murder charges were ever filed just because they just don't have enough evidence. They don't have the murder weapon. You have Shannon Dennis who went back on what he said. So was he lying? Was he telling the truth? I don't know. Me personally, why would you lie about being a part of a quadruple murder? Why would you go around town bragging about a quadruple murder that you were the getaway driver in? And oh, by the way, when they did the search warrant, the 1987 Chevy Monte Carlo with gray interior was parked right in front of Jamal's house, except it had now been painted blue. So you tell me. A man, in my opinion, got away with murdering four people. 
unfortunately though it's, if they don't feel that they have an airtight case they're not going to make any kind of arrest Huntington's always been one of those uh, unusual towns to me where it's like one block is really nice where you look at the houses and you say like oh I would raise a family here and then you literally drive across the street and around the corner and it is a totally different story so now I'm going to make a final trip uh, to the cemetery to visit the graves of the four individuals who tragically lost their lives on that uh, horrible early morning. I am at the Woodmere Memorial Park Cemetery here in Huntington and uh, this is the grave of the first victim, Michael Dillon. One mile down the road at the Spring Hill Cemetery, uh, this here is the grave of Dante Lee Ward. He was killed the day before his 20th birthday. And he was hanging out with Edric that night because both of their birthdays are only separated by one day. And this is the grave of his friend, Edric Clark, right here. And he was killed on his birthday. Very, very, very sad. He was 18 for only four hours. All right, we got one more stop to go. We're gonna drive over to Barbersville to go visit the grave of Megan. And we're at our final stop. We're at the Ridge Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery here in Barbersville, and this is the grave of Megan Poston. That is a newer grave. She had another grave right here. It looks like there was a recent burial, but I don't know who this was, if there are any uh, in relation to Megan, but. a bench for her over here as well. For your last words on earth to be pleading for your life. And uh, what I found more tragic than anything is how these murders basically the authorities know who pulled the trigger and there's nothing that could be done about it. I don't know if there's ever going to be any justice for these four kids, but it's very heartbreaking to not only lose your child to a, 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 a senseless, senseless act of violence and to know who did it, to know, to know the name of the person who killed your daughter and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, rest in peace to Megan and uh, 
the others uh, that were murdered that day. Okay, guys, I'm hitting the road. I'm out of here. I'll catch up with you on the next vlog. Peace out.